Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Model Kit Review. In today's fun review video, we'll be taking a look at my second completion of 2024, and that is Special Hobbies Reggiani RE2005 Sagittario. This is Special Hobby Kit number SH48206. The Reggiani RE2005 Sagittario was a World War II era Italian fighter aircraft. It was one of the Series 5 aircraft that were produced by Italian manufacturers. All of those aircraft were powered by a license-built version of the Daimler-Benz DB605 engine. That engine was produced in Germany. It was also used to power the Messerschmitt fighters. In testing, it was found that the RE2005 performed best at higher altitudes, where it was formidable when used against the U.S. bombers and escorting fighters. The armament consisted of two 20mm Mauser MG-151 cannon and two 12.7mm Breda machine guns. I previously done an in-process review of this kit where I talked about some of the difficulties that I had and that this kit should really be treated as a short run kit. I've also released several build updates as I went through and made progress on this kit. This kit was a somewhat challenging build. There was detail that needed to be rescribed in areas. There were areas that needed to be heavily modified to get everything to fit together properly. There were areas that were very tedious and difficult during construction. And I go over each of these problem areas in the build logs that I did for this kit. So if you want a really in-depth look at this step by step, I highly suggest watching the RE2005 playlist here. I'm tremendously happy with the way that this kit turned out. I think it turned out beautifully. I love the lines of the RE2005, and I think that this special hobby kit really captured those lines very well. One shape area that could be improved a little bit is the spinner shape. It's a little bit too bulbous on the kit, and it should come more to a conical point. Other than that, I didn't notice any glaring shape issues or accuracy issues with the kit. I'm not getting a slide ruler out and measuring everything here and there. I'm not really concerned about that. To my eye, the kit really captures the graceful shape of the fighter. In looking at historical pictures of the RE2005, every picture I could find showed them in very nice condition. There was not a lot of chipping around the panels. They were very minimally weathered, and the paint seemed to be more of a semi-gloss instead of a very flat finish as on some of the German aircraft. In my last build update video, the RE2005 was ready for paint. So we'll go through here. You can see my painting process. I painted the green for the interior framing of the cockpit canopy first. Then I sprayed some white for the rear fuselage band and masked that off. Next, I applied the underside color. I used Polyscale's Italian light blue gray. Once that was dry, I masked off the underside of the aircraft with some Tamiya tape some silly putty, and some rubber cement. I then applied the top side color, and I tried to maintain a little bit of shade variation on the upper side. I think I could have gone a little bit more drastic in my shade variation because the subsequent clear coats muted this effect somewhat. For the top side color on this aircraft, I used Italian Dark Olive Green from Polyscale. I think that really captured the color nicely. It's a little bit green when viewed from some angles, but it looks almost black from other angles and in different lighting, much like the original did. Before putting the clear coat on for decals, I added some weathering with some pastels. It's more apparent on the underside of the aircraft. And then I sealed the kit with a gloss coat of Future Floor Polish in preparation for the decals. I went with the second marking option here, and that is plane number two of the 362 Squadron. The decals on this kit were somewhat fragile. They required a lot of water underneath them in order to move them, and they seemed to be very sticky. They wanted to stay in place wherever they were initially placed on the model. So it really took a lot of careful work to get them positioned properly. I was able to get all of the decals to work except for the Italian national markings on the upper side of the wings and the lower side of the wings. And those are the circles with the three axes in them. These decals were simply too thin and wrinkled, so I had to replace those with decals from another kit. Once the decals were dry, I gave the aircraft a satin clear coat and did my final weathering and added the final bits. 
and I'm really, really happy with the way the kit turned out in the end. The surface detail is very petite. It's in grave detail. I did have to rescribe some panel lines here and there. I did have to do some careful cleanup on the seams of the kit. And really, if you get the construction phase of this kit completed successfully, the rest of the painting and weathering is fairly straightforward on it. There weren't really any surprises. The only difficult part in the painting process was masking around the landing gear that you have to build ahead of time before you complete the wing. In the end, I definitely think this is a short run kit. And if you treat it as such, you'll be rewarded with a really nice looking build. And with a little bit of extra effort, you can get mainstream results from the short run kit. Because this is a short run kit, I would recommend it for more experienced modelers and fans of World War II Italian aircraft. All right, I'd love to know what you guys think. If any of you have built Special Hobbies RE 2005, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. And until next time, model on.